Welcome back to How to Cake It. Halloween is on the way and I'm really excited. Today I'm gonna make a candy filled cake that's perfect for either your Halloween party or to make after Halloween with all your leftover candy, whatever that is. And make sure you watch to the end of the video because I'm gonna use something really delicious to make cobwebs. Usually when I dress up for Halloween, I go all out. I'm all or nothing, but it would be a little bit hard to bake in an astronaut costume. So, just some simple cat ears, a little tail, and of course, the necessary cat bow tie. Uh, I do have one question. When did cats start wearing bow ties? Are they always going to like a black tie affair? What, what is with cats? For all the step-by-step -step instructions, ingredients, and tools to make this Halloween scaredy cake, head to my website, howtocakeit.com. To make my Halloween scaredy cake, I started by making my eight pound portion of chocolate cake and dyeing it black. I used an entire container of Chef Master black gel food coloring. I just added it to the batter right at the end, and then I divided my batter into three eight inch round pans. I'm going to remove my cakes from my pans and begin to level them. I am leaving these layers whole. I'm not cutting them in half because I want there to be a lot of cake along with the buttercream and all that sweet candy inside. This is half of my recipe of Italian meringue buttercream, which you can make yourself. Just click the link in the description below. I have a whole video on it. And I'm just gonna dye it with some orange gel food coloring. This is gonna be fun. I want it to be really orange. It's Halloween. Just add some little by little and stir it into your buttercream. My buttercream is the perfect shade of orange. Look, my t-shirt's gonna match my cake today. I'm just gonna put this aside and move on to making black chocolate ganache. To make this ganache, all you need is some dark chocolate. I chopped some dark chocolate and I'm also using what are known as Calais. These are not chocolate chips, even though they look like chocolate chips. This is high quality Kuvacher chocolate. And then I have some whipping cream, which I'm about to boil in the microwave. A wooden spoon to stir it, and then some black food coloring to add at the end. I'm just gonna bring my cream to a boil in the microwave. All you need to do is pour this hot cream into your chocolate and then cover it and let it sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna clean up. So I'm just gonna remove my cake pan and start to stir my ganache slowly. Just stir your ganache until you see it come together in this rich sort of velvety chocolatey mixture. I'm gonna pour this entire container of black food coloring into this ganache and stir it in until it looks completely black. I'm gonna use this ganache today in two different ways. I'm gonna use it runny like this to drizzle inside my cake layers on top of my candy. And then I'm gonna use it set so that it's thicker and more spreadable to ice the entire outside of my cake. I recommend making the whole batch, letting it set, and when you get to the drizzling, just heat a little bit up and drizzle away. I'm gonna put this aside and get all of my Halloween candy. I'm gonna be using candy corn, which I think is so pretty, some gummy worms, some Halloween jelly beans, and then some black and orange Smarties. And these are just little chocolate, whoops. These are just little chocolate, whoop. What is wrong with me? Just stay there. I'm gonna unstack my black chocolate cake layers and shower them with simple syrup. And you can do that too. You can pick up one of these babies at my website, howtocakeit.com. This bottle is awesome. And while you're there, sign up to become a VIP member of How To Cake It because you can get all my videos like this one before they hit YouTube. That's very VIP. I actually feel like this cat is VIP. That's why the bow tie. So I'm gonna take about half this buttercream and dollop it into this cake and spread it around. I'm gonna keep my layers of buttercream pretty thick for this cake. I'm gonna use a mixture of all of this candy. I'm just gonna throw it in. Now I'm gonna drizzle some of my unset ganache. I'm doing this to help stick the candy down, add more flavor, and then my cake layer that I'm gonna lay on top has something to stick to as well because the candy's so smooth. Time for more buttercream. Candy time. 
time for more black chocolate ganache drizzle. Top and final layer going on. Now press down a little. Just make sure everything is secure in your cake. Wow. This cake is ready to be crumb coated, but first I'm gonna just take a little offset spatula and I'm gonna scrape away the excess buttercream as well as push in any candies or worms that are poking out to keep them all inside the cake. I actually made this ganache grainy and sludgy. Thank you for the word, Jocelyn. <laughs> By adding less cream and more chocolate and also using liquid food coloring rather than gel. Because the end result of this cake is gonna be like a cake that's been sitting in a haunted house for 50 years and you just found it. But you're gonna eat it anyway against your better judgment. I'm gonna take my ganache and press it against the sides of my cake to hold in all the crumbs and buttercream and candy and everything good. And then chill it for half an hour so we can give this cake a nice black ganache coating. My scaredy cake is nice and chilled. It's ready to ice. When I touch the ganache, it doesn't come off on my finger. I have more of my black ganache right here and I'm just gonna ice ice baby. I'm starting with the top of my cake and my offset spatula. Now I'm gonna ice the sides of this cake with more ganache. Going around the cake, holding the spatula perfectly straight. You should feel your spatula touching the cake all the way up the cake. That will help you know that you're icing your cake straight. Pull in the excess ganache from the top of the cake. Just use again this outer edge, keep it flat. Okay, come on. We're going to the fridge for 30 minutes. Now, I know I promised you that I would show you a fun way to make cobwebs all over this cake. What you're gonna need is mini marshmallows and a wooden spoon and a microwave. I'm just gonna heat these marshmallows for about 30 seconds at a time. You'll wanna stir your marshmallows quite a bit because they're really hot and you don't wanna burn yourself. We're gonna be using our hands, but already you can kinda see what's happening. Gets really elastic and hard to pull apart, but this is kind of what we want. Definitely make sure it's cool enough to touch, cool enough to put on your chocolate ganache. Now I'm gonna use both hands to pick up this marshmallow. Wow. 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 How do I let go of the marshmallow? <laughs> Holy mackerel. I can't even describe this to you. Look at this. Okay, I need to put this down somewhere. I can't get this marshmallow off my hand. <laughs> and pull it between my fingers in every direction. Just pull, and then you wanna sort of wrap this all around your cake in every direction. Don't think about it too much. Your marshmallow mixture might start to get too cool to pull apart. Just put some more back in the microwave and keep going. Oh, and you might get stuck to your table and need your friends to rescue you. Thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> Go with it. Go with it. Go where the marshmallow takes you, and then it won't leave you. <laughs> uh, just wait right here. I'll be right back. I finally got my hands clean. I need to add the star of the show to this cake, the gentleman responsible for all these cobwebs, Mr. Spider. I just unwrapped one of my little chocolate balls. Now I'm gonna cut off a little bit of the ball, not half, a little less than half, but just cut a flat bottom. Then I have some chocolate in a piping bag. I'm gonna pipe a little head on the spider. And then I'm gonna pipe some legs for my spider. I think they have eight legs, I've been told. Little V shapes, really open Vs. I'm piping the legs separately because I want them to harden and that way they can stand up a little. I'm gonna make a few more spiders. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna use, but I wanna have a few to choose from. My spiders are set. I'm just gonna place them on my cake and add their terrifying legs. This is about as close as I'm willing to get to a spider. Okay, more spiders. 
fighting for the cobweb territory. The great thing about our marshmallow cobweb is that it's so sticky, your spiders will just adhere to your cake. I used a little bit of more melted chocolate under the body of the spider. The legs are just sticking by themselves. I think I need to give these spiders a bit of a design and some character. Make them a little scary. I'm gonna use a little bit more chocolate and a paintbrush. And I'm going to add my little red sprinkle eyeballs. This one's Katie. This one's Brian. This one is um, Paolo. They're international spiders. I'm gonna add one final detail to these spiders, just a little bit of red luster dust with my fingertip, and I'm just gonna make a little marking on the back. You can have lots of fun designing your spiders with all kinds of colors of luster dust. You could pipe some colored candy melts on their backs. Well, spiders are all different all over the world, so whatever kind of spider you're used to. This is what happens when I try and make something scary. They end up adorable. Was it? Did you? Did I honestly scare you? That was creepy. <laughs> Are you making fun of me or was it scary? No, I swear to God, that was creepy. <laughs>